You know Sonic, the franchise with the weird fan base and mostly bad games. Believe it or not, that franchise used to be respectable and liked. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is perhaps the most respected of the bunch. Not only is it one of the Genesis's best sellers, second best after Sonic's first game, which was bundled with the Genesis, but since its 1992 release, it's been available on basically everything. I personally have it myself on Genesis, Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube, Sonic Mega Collection Plus on the Xbox, which is how I recorded this game through Xbox 360 backwards compatibility. I didn't realize at the time that a newer version also has Knuckles in Sonic 2, because most versions don't. It's available standalone on the Xbox 360 as part of Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on the Xbox 360 and standalone through the Sega Ages line on Switch, a version which has a few cool features like the drop dash, level select by default, and Knuckles, which I did not know, and in Sega Genesis Classics on Switch, plus ports on various plug and plays and all that other shit. I have Sonic 2 a lot. There's a lot of ways I don't have to play it, but there are also to play it. It's on basically everything. There's also a few notable versions that I don't own. The mobile phone version, which has been ported to PC by fans, runs at an incredible 60 frames per second, and includes a level cut from the game before launch, Hidden Palace. And there's also 3D Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is a 3DS port with some quality of life stuff, and the ability to view it in 3D if you'd like. Sonic 2 is one of the most easily accessible games of all time, and I'm sure most people have played it at some point, at least a little, which makes the introduction kind of difficult. Really, the game is just a certified classic, and everyone knows it. <laughs> Part of 2D Sonic's appeal is its simplicity. Sonic 2 is a one-button game. Save movement, every button on the Genesis controller, and most buttons on more modern controllers that have ports to this game, is jump. Sonic only has two actions outside of movement and jumping, rolling and the new spin dash. Sonic rolls simply by pressing down while moving. Both jumping and rolling put Sonic in his ball form, doing so turns him into a prickly ball of death that can destroy enemies. The spin dash is a bit of a cheat to gain speed. By crouching while not moving, then pressing the jump button, Sonic charges a roll from a standstill, and then lunges forward at full speed. It's kind of a band-aid on Sonic 1's design. In that game, speed was a reward for good gameplay, but then only two levels were actually made in a way that let that happen. Sonic was sold on speed, so the spin dash makes getting that speed easier and faster while also minimizing minimizing challenges based around building speed, like getting up slopes, instead opting for more freeform design based around avoiding obstacles quickly. What mainly sets Sonic's basic moveset apart from other equally simple movesets is pinball. Sonic is a pinball, the game is built on a pinball engine, and it feels like pinball. Sonic is slow to get up to speed, carries momentum into jumps, and even when bouncing into and off of enemies. Any slope, no matter how shallow, is a speed boost, and any hill is an obstacle. The thing that makes Sonic fun is jumping in the perfect spot to bounce off an enemy, then another, then roll down a hill, and into a jump, and a bounce, bounce, so on. A game that makes jumping satisfying every single time is going to be a good game when it's a platformer. <laughs> There's also some other fun stuff to mess with using the game's physics. If Sonic can make his way onto a wall while rolling using a slope or whatever, he can jump off to reach new areas. When the game allows it, the simple act of moving and going fast is great. In the Switch version, Sonic also has the drop dash, a move pulled from the relatively recent Sonic Minya. By pressing down and jump in the air, Sonic will initiate a spin dash immediately on landing, which really helps keep up the pace. Uh, the game wasn't designed around having the drop dash, so you could argue that it's a little broken, but it's a feature that can be turned off, so it's basically just a bonus. Another important element of Sonic is rings. Like coins in Mario, they're spread around stages, collecting 100 gives an extra life, and passing a goalpost, which serves as checkpoints with 50, allows access to the bonus stage, but they also serve a more important function that makes seeking them out worth it. If Sonic is hit while holding rings, he won't die. When hit without rings, Sonic is out instantly. Rings serve as a safety net, arguably too good of a safety net at most points. Getting hit reduces his ring count to zero, but he drops up to 20 rings which can be recollected. It's not a perfect safety net, rings despawn quickly, they can fall into pits. It's often been joked in shitty webcomics that Sonic only needs one ring, but there's plenty of benefits to collecting more, obviously. <laughs> Getting hit also affords Sonic tons of invincibility, making tanking hits a viable strategy through many of the game's obstacles. Sonic 2 also has three simple power-ups, a shield that protects him from one hit, invincibility, and speed shoes which briefly increase his speed and acceleration. The bonus stages in Sonic 2 are faux 3D behind the back segments with the gold collecting rings on the inside of a tube. There are seven bonus stages which are played in order, and each of the seven is the same every time, making them memorizable. Getting enough rings awards Sonic with a Chaos Emerald, getting all seven allows him to become supersonic at any time. 
When he has 50 rings and jumps, yes this means it's impossible to avoid activating for whatever reason. Later games changed it to pressing jump a second time in the air. Sonic becomes faster, jumps higher, and becomes invincible while losing one ring a second. If he runs out of rings in this form, he reverts back to regular Sonic. Although it's pretty hard to drag out a level past 50 seconds while also collecting more rings which extends the timer to get to a point where Sonic will revert, especially because he's fully invincible. I guess I also need to talk about Tails somewhere, I didn't have a good place to cram him in. Tails is a new character joining Sonic on his adventure, by default Tails is controlled by AI and follows Sonic, potentially getting rings or defeating enemies Sonic's missed, and getting some extra damage on bosses. A second player can also control Tails, although keeping up with Sonic is very difficult, and the co-op does not work great. The only time the second player will see any use is in bosses where Tails is invincible and can just tank hits and go at the boss with no risk. Uh, even then the bosses are so easy that it's hardly necessary. The player can also turn off Tails or choose to play as Tails alone, who acts identically to Sonic in this game. Sonic music absolutely slaps. High energy, fast paced, and catchy as hell, uniquely using the Genesis' tinny sound chip to play with heavy bass lines. Mystic Cave Zone is fucking perfect with that deep bass line, high contrasting notes. Hilltop has that wacky fucking synthesized banjo and whistling and ugh. God, every track will be stuck in your head for ages, and the final boss theme is somehow catchy and intimidating. I love it all. Every fucking song in this game is a banger. Visually, the game is okay. I mean, for the most part, it, it generally looks nice. Sonic is expressive and has lots of personality. Enemies have cute designs, but they aren't like very animated or expressive. And while the stages are fairly expressive, they're all different from each other and have nice backgrounds for the most part, as well as distinct theming. The game's definitely not as visually impressive as it is on the soundtrack side. Uh, for a long time as a kid, I thought Mystic Cave Zone was like a weird forest thing, despite what it's called. All the like gem rock cave crystal things are all green and makes them look like leaves. Some of them aren't as good as others. I think Sonic and Eggman hold up really well, and everything else is pretty, certainly above average, like this is a big title, but it's not like standout impressive, and it, it does for the most part run pretty well. There are a few times when it has a little bit of slowdown, especially when Sonic gets hit and drops rings and there's 20 rings on screen and 5 enemies, it'll slow down a little bit, but it, it generally runs pretty fucking smoothly, especially for how fast paced the game can be. Sonic 2 doesn't have much of a story. Dr. Eggman, the series villain, has built a death egg that he uses to put animals into robots. Um, at least I think that's what he's doing on the death egg. The death egg doesn't really, like, obviously it's a Death Star parody, but we never really learn what he's doing with the death egg, other than he has a bigger robot than average up there. Anyway, he, he uses it to put animals into robots, hence enemies turning into small animals and flying away when defeated, Sonic's rescuing them, and Sonic needs to go and stop him. The story basically starts and ends there, levels aren't particularly connected or plot relevant outside of, I guess, the final few. Emerald Hill Zone is... Well, to address it first, no, it isn't Green Hill Zone from Sonic 1. It's just incredibly fucking close. Good designs never age, but boy howdy is Green Hill testing my patience. With few exceptions, zones in Sonic 2 have two acts, which use the same themes and enemies but slightly up the challenge. Emerald Hill shows off two important design concepts of the Sonic franchise. First, speed. Emerald Hill has very few four stops, almost no pits or ways to fall off the stage, and enemies that don't slow Sonic down. Not only are they extremely non-aggressive, but Sonic can gain speed through momentum when destroying them. The second is layering. Emerald Hill has two very obvious paths, an upper and a lower. The upper level is much more demanding, jumps are tighter and wider, may require bouncing off enemies or taking hidden paths, but managing this saves a bunch of time over the lower route. Falling also doesn't result in death, the punishment for messing up on the top path is being dropped to the bottom path, which is safer but slower. It creates an interesting dynamic. Good play is tougher by design, but is rewarded with greater speed. Um, how do I talk about the bosses? They tend to be bad, and by bad I mostly mean easy. Most bosses crumble under pressure, especially given when they do hit Sonic, he becomes invincible, which just lets him mash the jump button to destroy them in about 10 seconds. The first Eggman machine to serve as a boss is a car with a drill that slowly drives back and forth. 
It's easy enough to get three or more hits in per rotation, and the boss takes eight hits to defeat, like all the other bosses. After the seventh hit, Eggman launches the drill, which is about as easy to dodge as the rest of the boss. Most future bosses follow this pattern in that they are largely formalities. Levels following this have the same format of high path, low path, but also begin incorporating in level gimmicks. On top of a banger song, Chemical Plant Zone is probably the best remembered stage in the game for the drowning. Act 2 has an infamous stretch where the water level rises, falling in runs the risk of drowning accompanied by the stressful drowning music. It's possible to avoid all or most of the water through routing, but the jumps on small moving platforms are very easy to mess up. It's possible to climb back up after falling in, but time is very tight. Other gimmicks are more minor, panels that flip to either be solid platforms or disappear periodically, tubes that just move Sonic around, stuff like that. The boss has one of my least favorite Sonic tropes. On the end of each area is the flip panels, meaning about half the time the fight takes place with instant death on either side, while the boss itself is very passive, just dropping very occasional blobs into the center. It's not likely, but possible to have bad luck on the rebound, especially when he first starts moving, and be dunked into the pits. The boss itself is so passive that beating it quickly kind of mitigates the risk, but I could see new players really struggling with Chemical Plant Zone. I know I did as a kid. It is a fun level. It's very fast paced, constantly moving, but it's probably the hardest up until like the final three or four. I remember struggling with this one as a kid, mostly the boss and the water part. Aquatic Rune Zone also has a focus on water. Like Emerald Hill, it's very focused on its various paths. Falling down leads to long stretches of underwater sections, all of the level is so straightforward that it isn't nearly as stressful, and there are areas where Sonic can refill his air by gulping on bubbles. Going through water is slow, meaning the high path is extremely rewarding, although the upper layers have pillars that shoot arrows at Sonic from behind, which are a little bit hard to avoid. Kinda gotta stop yourself from just going full speed ahead occasionally. The boss here is probably the only one in the game with great design. Two totem poles appear on both sides of the arena when Eggman bashes one with his hammer and shoots an arrow at the other, which can be used on top of the pole where the player is supposed to jump at Eggman, fall down, and repeat. Although with good play, it's possible to bounce off of Eggman and back on top of the pole, which means Sonic can spend the whole time not going through the waiting and arrows and all that. That's a really neat thing that lets the boss be sped up. The other bosses don't have anything nearly that interesting, although many of them still do die very quickly. In a way, it's kind of like a reflection of the high path, low path thing in boss form. It's trickier to stay on top, but it's also much faster. <laughs> Casino Night Zone is a pinball table and a casino rolled into one. Flippers are placed in miniature tables that exist in the middle of the stage, pretty much all over the place, and the player can go ham racking up rings or points in the pinball slots. As fun as it can be, the actual level is incredibly linear and easy. Um, fantastic song. There's barely any enemies or obstacles, it's kind of like a rest area or like a fun distraction. I think the only reason it was made is because pinball. <laughs> They just wanted to reference that song, very good. The boss takes place in one of these pinball tables where the flippers are an option, but they're not really a good option. They're a little too difficult to precisely aim Sonic at Eggman. Optimally, it's easiest to just run back and forth and jump off the walls towards Eggman, who just kind of floats back and forth, dropping bombs very occasionally. <laughs> Both acts of Hilltop Zone are pretty straightforward. The primary gimmick of the stage is gondolas that carry Sonic down, but each act also has a segment where Sonic is trapped in a small area with something rising, either land or lava, which poses an interesting challenge, as it mixes elements of precision and speed without being full precision platforming like the first game had, where it's just stopping on tiny platforms and jumping between them. The boss rises and sinks into lava on either end of the stage. Lava isn't instant death, but rings fall through it, making recollection hard. That said, the boss itself just shoots a small fireball and then lights the ground next to him on fire. It's very easy, it's pretty hard to do the boss quickly, as in like hit it multiple times per cycle, but the boss itself is easy if you're not trying to speedrun it. Mystic Cave Zone has lightning bug enemies. They're invincible hitboxes when lit up, which can be very fucking annoying. Outside of that, the only real stage gimmicks are like these rock pillars that bounce up and down. I guess there's like vines that you pull on to lower bridges. Uh, it's not very gimmicky. It's probably my favorite stage in the game, partially owing to the absolutely fucking fantastic music. 
Although I also think it's a it's a good one. It challenges you to go fast, but going fast also requires kind of like knowing what you're doing <laughs> more than like Emerald Hill Zone where it's pretty easy to just press right and jump repeatedly. The boss is the only one before the end that I'd consider hard, partly because it's easy to get fucked on it. The checkpoint right before the boss doesn't have accessible rings because it's at the bottom of the pit, which means losing to the boss or going into the bonus stage leaves Sonic with zero rings for the boss that's the most chaotic and easiest to get hit on. Between slowly drifting across the stage, Eggman will drill into the ceiling which drops rocks and stalagmites. Rocks are just there to clutter up the screen and don't damage Sonic, but the stalagmites do. <laughs> They come very fast, it can be pretty hard to dodge them. It's very easy to get an unlucky pattern with the spikes and just get smashed once and if you're in there with no rings it's just like, okay, good luck. Mystic Cave Zone has the best song in the game, so here's just like a few more seconds of it right here. Oil Ocean is interesting. It feels like every idea they had was tossed in and blended, with no real coherence. There's fans that blow Sonic around either against him just to stall him for no reason or float him upwards across gaps, cannons that launch him around, these things that pop up periodically which are pretty fun to jump off of even if there's a little waiting involved. The entire bottom of the screen is a sea of oil that Sonic slowly sinks in. He's able to jump around in it to keep on top of it so you can kind of like bounce back and forth and stay in and get around that way. The theming and the music are some of the weakest in the game I think. The little Arabian part's kind of nice in, in the music but the level itself is Okay, the boss's little quirk is that he rises from the oil. It's possible to bounce off him like a solid four or five times every time he comes up, and all his attacks can be dodged by just hanging out in the oil. The only flaw is that sometimes when hitting him, Sonic can just fall through the oil instantly and die. It's fairly rare to happen, but I had it happen to me a few times during this playthrough, and I know that's been a thing that's happened to me in the past as well. From this point on, I think the game more or less starts to fall apart. Uh, it's hard to say what caused this, wanting to make the game end difficult so that it would be like more replayable and keep people for longer, which was a very common tactic at that time. Rush development is possible, it definitely influenced some of the issues the game has, or just accidental issues with the level design. <laughs> Metropolis Zone is three acts, and each one is a fucking headache. Why three? I guess time constraints? In the first game, all stages had three acts, but I think they realized that that was too many and it got exhausting and they wanted to change it up more. I'm guessing they had something else planned and just didn't have time to implement it, so they reused the Metropolis Zone theming. I don't know. <laughs> Great song, and it's kind of funny to note that in earlier builds of the game, the area was named Genocide City Zone. The Japanese game developers probably didn't understand the meaning of the word and just thought it sounded cool, and then someone informed them what it meant and they changed to a more generic name. Metropolis defines itself on long levels, tedium, bad enemies, and beginner traps. These screws take ages to go up, and at the top of almost every single one is one of the stage's three awful enemies. Crabs have a giant invincible hitbox in the form of their claw, which hits Sonic even in ball form. Mantis are the same, but also toss their sides around, which home in on and chase Sonic. And the starfish enemies float inside the walls and explode tiny projectiles in five directions. They're almost always placed along the screws, and whenever they go off, you just have to see them coming, stop completely to avoid them. It kills the pace of something that already takes forever, and if they hit you, you get knocked off and have to go back up. It's very fucking bad. <laughs> but the placement doesn't stop there. Almost every jump in the generally cramped areas of Metropolis Zone has an enemy on the other side just waiting to launch Sonic backwards off a pit. The boss is kind of neat, but one that actually gives me trouble because I think it's a bit hard to fully grasp. Eggman's Eggmobile is surrounded by spinning orbs that switch between diagonal angles. I find it easy to get hit while going at it, even when I seem to get the timing right. There are times when I get into the rhythm and I can just keep going at them, but there are other times where it just doesn't work. Uh, taking hits is always an option, so it's not that difficult. Each time Eggman is hit, he produces a clone that needs to be destroyed with an attack, and when all his orbs are gone, he begins desperately blasting lasers before the final hit gets in. Metropolis is a long, tedious mess and a sign of what's to come for the rest of the game. 
Why does Sky Chase Zone exist? A 3 minute auto scroller with some of the worst game feel ever put in a 2D game. Sonic spins the stage on the hood of Tails' plane, the Tornado. By looking up and down, the plane can be raised and lowered to avoid enemies, but this also means that lowering the plane while moving causes Sonic to roll. The weirdest part is the horizontal movement. To move left and right, Sonic needs to be at the edge of either side of the plane, meaning there's wind-up to moving left and right. It feels really fucking weird, like despite how it looks, you don't have any direct control over a tornado. You're just awkwardly guiding the thing through Sonic's movement. Anytime you want to switch from moving right to left, you have to wind up Sonic's momentum to go the other way. It feels very fucking awkward. The stage itself is extremely easy, enemies aren't aggressive, they basically just hold still in spots. But it does occasionally require movement. It's a very tedious semi-cut scene that feels very gross when it actually forces the player to do something. Wing Fortress is a cool stage, but it has issues that are really strange to me. Wing Fortress takes place on the outside of Eggman's airship. It has very few enemies, but lots of unique obstacles all over, like collapsing platforms, launchers that throw Sonic around, and giant fans to avoid. The concept is so cool that the next game in the series would do it again, but better in almost every single way. The two major issues that I have are the, the bars that Sonic can hang from near the beginning, which he sometimes just doesn't grab. I'm not sure what causes this, probably something to do with the angle of approach. It feels very strange to jump right through one of these bars and instantly die. The other is one of the launchers, which is supposed to throw Sonic over a large gap. Touching any direction or any button while using it causes it to just throw Sonic directly into the pit and kill him. The controller needs to be completely neutral, but then on the other side there's another launcher that also throws him into the pit. So you have to press nothing, get thrown over the pit, instantly jump. It feels like it's not working correctly, which I suspect that it's not. It's very weird. <laughs> the boss is cool and unique. It's a giant laser that slowly tracks Sonic around and periodically fires a large beam, while three platforms with spikes on the bottom bounce around so that Sonic can get up to the laser and hit it. It's pretty chaotic and overwhelming. A lot of players are going to instinctually try to bounce between the platforms to stay moving and stay up in the air, but I find that hanging on the edge avoids the platforms for the most part and lures the laser over. Uh, it's a fun boss, reasonably challenged. The only minor issue is that rings can pass through the walls on the sides of stages, which makes them unrecoverable, but if hit near the top of the stage, they can also pass through the ceiling. <laughs> and fall above the play area and also be unrecoverable and getting hit near the top means the all it can get a little uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> and then there's death egg zone the cutscene to get there is cool and these transitions would become more standard in the next game it might be a little long And we're there. Death Egg Zone is two final bosses in a row, with the strange caveat that the stage has no rings. I had a friend of mine tell me that this was fine because the player should have learned not to take hits, but the game's design doesn't support this idea as far as I'm concerned. The ring system teaches the player that it's okay, beneficial even, to take hits, since rings can be recovered and posted invincibility is very generous, especially when fighting bosses where it just allows Sonic to go completely ham. Both bosses also have inherent hitboxes that instantly kill Sonic. I think it's a big ass to go from borderline invincible to instant death in the matter of literally seconds since the previous boss. Mecha Sonic rolls back and forth in a spike ball, occasionally jumping to mix it up, although his pattern is fixed so it's memorizable. Most of the time, Mecha Sonic's hair spikes are instant death, so Sonic needs to approach it from the front slightly. Pretty fun boss, fast pace, mostly fair. The idea of a robot Sonic would get greatly expanded on in the next couple games, and then we kind of stop doing that as well. Death Egg Robot, on the other hand, is uh... wait, wait. God damn. The Egg Robot is a bit tedious. His pattern is extremely simple. He steps forward a few times, steps back once, leaps into the air, drops down where Sonic was when the reticle turned red, throws his hands, jumps again, lands, starts again from the stepping pattern, and it goes on like this. 
It's possible to hit him between steps, but his arms are spiked and janky. It's very difficult to get right to avoid instant death, which sends the player back to Mecha Sonic. When played safe, he's an absolute cakewalk, but takes forever. When played aggressively, he's a pain that feels more chance than skill. I guess it makes sense in a way, it's the high route, low route again, but uh, it feels a little too binary on those routes. It's either fast and very, very difficult to get correct, or incredibly slow and boring. Uh, I think that it's a good idea with iffy execution. I would have preferred if the stage had even one ring just to keep with the rest of the game, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm just bad. Sonic 2 also introduced a competitive multiplayer mode to go alongside the co-op. The split-screen multiplayer feels pretty haphazard, while the main game has very occasional slowdown, mostly when Sonic has been hit and is dropping rings. It's never really bad enough for it to be largely notable, just occasional frame dips. In versus mode, it's pretty much constant. The game runs in the single-digit frame rates for 30 seconds at a time whenever both players have an enemy on screen and ungodly amounts whenever a ring drops. It makes the game pretty insufferable. The multiplayer consists of two players simultaneously running through either Emerald Hill, Casino Night, or Mystic Cave Zones, all of which have new music, although honestly, the songs for multiplayer are far weaker than the originals. One of the versus stages is also the special stage, where players compete for rings and can place themselves in front by jumping. Ironically, despite not caring much for Sonic 2 special stages, this one might be the most fun competitively. One, it doesn't have horrible slowdown, and two, it feels a little more competitive to have the jump mechanic implemented, it's a little something extra on top. The versus mode also randomizes the monitors in stages, they all feature question marks and give a random reward. Rings, fast shoes, invincibility, Eggman monitors which hurt Sonic, and the switch which makes player 1 and 2 switch positions. Needless to say, don't risk the boxes if ahead, because getting switched backwards is very stupid. The multiplayer is very half-baked. I enjoyed playing it with my brother, but it's sloppy and barely functional. Feels thrown together at the last minute just because they wanted to have a slightly more real multiplayer. Uh, if you're curious to see us play it, I'll be posting an edited Let's Play on our second channel soon, which I'll link in the description. Does it really need to be said? Sonic 2 was a massive hit. Sonic 1 began the series, but Sonic 2 really solidified it, set its mechanics and features in stone, and created the foundation for one of gaming's largest franchises. Very sleek prototypes I won't dive too much into show a somewhat rocky production full of changes and cuts and other things, but the game is generally great. I think the ending of it is a bit rough, the last, like, couple levels. Metropolis especially, but the stages before that are all fantastic. Sonic gets plenty of great chances to go fast with good play. Levels can have challenging segments without resorting to slow precision sections like the first game often did. Each stage has fun gimmicks, fantastic music. The first three-fourths of Sonic 2 are basically perfect and show why the game is a classic. If the endgame had more polished stages, no weirdness with mechanics on Wing Fortress, Sky Chase being cut outright, probably. <laughs> uh, um, I think Sonic 2 would basically be perfect. It's very close as it is, and a game I love to revisit, even if it's just turning on Emerald Hill for a few minutes to mess around. Uh, for anyone who somehow hasn't managed to uh, try Sonic the Hedgehog 2, it's very good. Um, one more thing before I end though, there is another version of Sonic 2, kind of. Knuckles the Echidna in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which I'll henceforth be calling Knuckles in Sonic 2 because the full title is a mouthful, is a strange beast. Sonic and Knuckles itself is outside of the scope of the video, that'll be in a future Sonic 3 video, but in short, McDonald's, yes that one, made Sonic 3 get split in two, and Sega had to make a special cartridge that allowed the front half and the back half of the games to recombine, or to make towers of and Knuckles and Knuckles and Knuckles featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. As an added bonus, connecting Sonic and Knuckles to Sonic 2 allows Knuckles to be played in each and every stage of the game. I guess this version of Sonic 2 could be considered to have released in 1994 for the Genesis, but many collections which otherwise have both Sonic 2 and Sonic and Knuckles don't often include the compatibility. The only ones, as far as I'm where Mega Collection, Mega Collection Plus, the iOS version which has it by default without needing a Knuckles, 
and the Ages version on Switch, which also has it by default. I recorded it on Mega Collection Plus before I realized the far superior Switch version had it. Music and stages are the same, with only minor changes made to the stages to add secrets for Knuckles to find with his unique moves and a few quality of life fixes. For example, entering a bonus stage doesn't drain Knuckles of his rings, although dying also resets him with his rings as well, which is a bit excessive, although it makes the Mystic Cave boss more fair. Although, on the other hand, Knuckles can also climb back out of the Mystic Cave pit and go get rings, so... I don't know. Makes it a little too easy, maybe. <laughs> Knuckles is a bit slower and can't jump as high, but gains the ability to glide and climb. By pressing jump a second time in the air, Knuckles glides forward, which gives him a slight boost and lets him cross huge gaps. In some stages, as they weren't designed with him in mind, Knuckles can pretty much just fly across the entire thing <laughs> end to end without doing any platforming. Knuckles can also cling to most walls, some are arbitrarily off limits, presumably because the game just doesn't have anything to find in those places because Sonic can't reach them. Knuckles makes most of the stages a uh, fucking breeze. <laughs> On the other side, most bosses are much harder with Knuckles as he can't climb in boss arenas and jumps much lower. This is primarily a problem against the Death Egg robot, who Knuckles can only damage as he's landing, which makes his damage window like one second every minute. <laughs> as, as Knuckles' jump is so low, he always dies when attacking otherwise, meaning he has to play even safer than Sonic's safe playing, dragging the boss out for nearly seven fucking minutes. It's not fun. It's, it's horrible. That all said, it's the same great game with a fun little gimmick of a different character. The game is obviously not designed for Knuckles. He breaks in half. Even the normally miserable Metropolis Zone is much less awful. It's a fun little novelty, and for people who've played Sonic 2, it's a fun new way to experience it. Same great game with a fun twist. So I guess, in that case, if... Uh, play Knuckles in Sonic 2, it's also great. Uh, anyways, as for updates, I'm playing Heart Gold. Uh, sometime between Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I'll be playing a game based on a movie based on a game and making a little video about it. And after Soul Silver, the big Pokemon video will come out. Uh, yep. And subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.